Hey, and welcome back to the channel. Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate in your home. Happy holidays to you. This video should be arriving right after the Christmas break and right before New Year's Eve. So I've got a lot of stuff to do. All right, so if you're new to the channel, I am working on a 2002 Porsche 911 Carrera. I recently took the engine out and had it bored out to a four liter and I'm putting it all back together. But before that, I did welding on this car. They had, had a massive rust problem on the passenger side. I repaired the convertible top. So there's lots of do-it-yourself projects in this video series. So be sure to click the pop-up or look at my playlist so that you can get caught up in all the stuff that I've been doing on this car. Because I, I bought it back in April of 2021, and here we are, December of 2022, and the car still hasn't started yet. I mean, it was running before, but I wanted to take the engine out and tune it up. So here we are. All right, so where did we leave off? Well, I recently bolted on the cylinder heads, and now we gotta get the valve train components into that engine so that we can get it in time. So we have a lot of work to do. I'm gonna get started, put you on time lapse, and bring back Yogi Mama so we can go back and forth and she can make fun of me. So with that said, let's fix it. Okay, so as you saw in the time lapse, I've got all of the tappets in. I got the, well, first of all, I got the carrier in. This is a girdle, carrier, whatever you want to call it, but it holds the lifters or tappets. There's different names for all of this. It's all torqued in, and uh, I've got the exhaust tappets. The exhaust tappets don't have a little tooth or a groove to line things up. It's meant to spin around. So you saw my wrist kind of going around like that. That's just because I'm just making sure they're fully seated before moving on to the next one. And then with the intake tappets, there's a little little groove right there. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see, come on. There you go, yep. Yeah. And those will, these are all lined up a certain way because this is a vario, vario valve timing system. So these are, have to be in this orientation or it won't work. So the next thing I need to do now is to get the cams in here, but I need to prep all of the, the top journals here to make sure they're ready.
All right, bank one is complete. I've got the holder in place. I had to use a different bolt. I didn't have another 40 millimeter. This one actually goes to my ignition coil. So I'm gonna have to get my hand on another 40 or see where I left it. But anyway, this thing is all torqued down and ready to go. I don't have the three chain alignment uh, chuck here. So what I have in my kit, it looks like it's this. This goes to a five chain, it doesn't quite work right. So I'm gonna have to get that in a kit before I can completely time everything. But if you can see here, everything is pretty horizontal here. There's a little bit of play, but not a whole lot. It's not gonna keep me from continuing. I just can't completely time this thing until I have the proper tools, obviously. All right, so now I gotta get this engine in top dead center and we can move on to bank two. Hey. Hi. Looks like you've got your hands full there. Yeah, I'm getting uh, bank two going now. I got the bank one side done, and now I gotta get all the components in here done so that I can, uh, you know, move on and get this done. So I gotta redo basically what I did in bank one here in bank two, just some slight differences, but not much. And then um, we can start getting this thing in time. Very cool. See all of your witness marks? Yeah, for the cylinder head bolts. I'm putting in these O-rings for the lifter carrier. And they go in dry. That's surprising. Yeah, that way they don't move around when you're shifting this thing, because they get sticky, you know? Yeah. And then this is the machined lifter carrier. And that came from who? Who machined that again? Uh, Hoffman Automotive. That's why it's so pretty. Yeah. Oop, that's exhaust. Get this guy in. Like that. Make sure. Yeah. Sitting on the dowels. And I gotta put all these bolts in. Do you have to lubricate those beforehand like you did some yeah, of the others? Yeah, as a matter of fact, that's a great point. So what I'll do, I guess I should have left them all in a, in a line here, but what I'll do is just lube them up. I was just guessing. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought it up because they should use a little bit of lube. The other ones did. <clears throat> or is that because these are stretch bolts? No, also? these are not stretch bolts. These are just little six mils. It just threads in easier. Okay. All right. There's 11 of these. It's another 10 newton yeah. meters kind 10, of thing? 10 newton meter. The, uh, all of these six millimeter bolts are all pretty much the same. What's happening here? Putting a little assembly grease on each one of the valve stems here for the tappet install. And then I'm gonna come in and do a high viscosity lubricant on the walls. The lube is a little cold from the weather. Come on, there you go. Remember when you told the air conditioning people we didn't need heat in the garage? Mm -hmm. I still believe that. <laughs> it's Texas, man. You don't need that. <laughs> how goopy that is, huh? Yes. It's supposed to be very clingy. I imagine it melts. Very quickly. Yeah. Oh yeah. The the high viscosity or the assembly grease for sure. Very quickly. But you need this during initial startup. Otherwise, bad things happen. 
until it builds oil pressure. And you have a special oil that you're going to use to break it in too, right? Mm -hmm. It's a non-synthetic oil that is, uh, has a bunch of vitamins and minerals in it. And dinosaurs? <laughs> and dinosaurs, yes. Yeah, dinosaurs. Lots of dinosaurs. Seems like uh, an unusual container to store yeah. all these. Well, if you remember, Yogi Mama, you're the one who came up with this idea. <laughs> I was like, those are that's a perfect size for these. And look at this, it held it perfectly and it absorbed all the oil. That's why it's so dark. I took this out over a year ago. So they've been sitting in here all this time. Yeah, that looks good. See those exhaust tappets just spin around. Right. Unlike the intake tappets, they have a little notch in them to line them up because it's a vario cam, meaning that the engine will adjust timing based on the conditions, meaning, you know, are you hauling ass? Are you idling? So those tappets need to be in the right spot, whereas exhaust is exhaust. No, var no variable timing on exhaust in this car. Now we're going to do the intake side. Same exact thing. Are they exactly the same or no, are they no. different? Like I said, they have a little notch of tooth here oh. that lines in with that tooth. I see. That's what you were talking about. Keeps it from spinning. There you go. There. All right, last one. Okay, yeah. I keep my hands. They look good. These here are compression rings. Mm -hmm. And what do you, do these look familiar to you at all? Have you seen these before? Yes. Um, is that like on the pistons? Exactly. They're very similar. These compression rings actually slide inside of this plane bearing. So what I'm doing is I'm indexing them just like I would a piston to make sure that they're opposite of each other. So let's get this on. And what I want to do to make sure that I do it right and not backwards is to index it again like that and then see, okay, this goes like this. So the bearing goes like that. I thought you said that it goes on dry. The outside. Ah. 
these are dynamic surfaces right here. So they need to be put on wet. All right, I'll come in close so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see I'm gonna compress those springs or those little rings and then get it on. And this is not easy. There, there's one, okay. And then, oops, I'm gonna turn it over the other side. There, damn, that was way easier than the first time. Okay, so now the bearing's on, it's lubed up. We put it in the diamond washer, right here. All right, and then this guy, vein cell adjuster, okay. Your bolt guide and a new bolt and a new washer, by the way. Okay, now I lube. That does not get lubed. Right, because I remember, I just saw you clean that. Yeah, that does not get lubed. Because that is also touching the outside of that bearing, right? That's right. You don't want any oil in there to interfere with um, it sitting, right? Oil is um, hydraulic, right? So it, you can build pressure under that bearing and never sit right. We're gonna do the inside, the intake side. Part. Here we go. See the bearing? Yep. It's got to go face down. Mm -hmm. And then, if I remember correctly, the middle ones are face up. There. Okay. Yep. And then this gets indexed next. I was going to say that's not in the right spot. Now you've got the whole outside dirty. I'm not worried about that. Okay. What you'll see here is once it's indexed, it'll fall right into place. There. And I'm lubing up the sides here because this is a thrust uh, bearing as well. There. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna tighten these down. Hang on, aren't you forgetting a bolt? This one here? Yeah. Yeah, I won't be putting that one in just yet because it's gonna be, there's a, a chain tensioner or a, tri, a chain guide, I should say, that goes right here. And there are longer bolts, so I need to put the exhaust side on too. So I'm just gonna snug this down, not a lot, just until once I hit some tension, I'm stopping. It's just to hold it in place. So no ugga duggas. No, no ugga duggas, no ugga duggas. <laughs> Either. I don't have my cam alignments yet, so I'm using the five chain one just to keep them horizontal. Okay, for, for the non-car people in the room, what's this thing that you're holding? This is a cam alignment tool that lines up with the, the, the slit right here on the end, but this is not for a, a three chain, this is for a five chain. Okay. But all I can do until I get my other cam alignments for a three chain is use this to help keep it horizontal during the initial setup. And then I'll have to stop until I get the actual alignment tool so that when it's time to get the phasing just right, I do it right. Got it. Yeah. Check, check, mm -hmm. check. Do you get that? Mm-hmm. There we go. There we go. It should just kind of go like that. And then, yep, just like that. Just like that. There. 
Okay. See? Straight across. Right. It's in semi time. It's not officially in time, but it's where it needs to be for the for the assembly. Damn it. <laughs> I keep doing them wrong. That goes here. <laughs> this goes here. There we go. There. And everything's under pressure slightly. Mm -hmm. Because you can see the lobes are slowly pushing down on the exhaust tappets. This thing is going to start getting real tight. So I've got to be real careful at this point. All right. New introduction. This is simulating um, tension because the bearings here are on actually integrated into the cover. So this is simulating tension downwards to hold everything in place. So it doesn't stay there? No, this is just during the timing. Yeah. Is that part of a kit that you had to get? It was part of that, uh, the kit for the piston installation and uh -huh. then that red handle thing that I showed you a moment ago. Right. For a five chain. Yeah, that one. And the trick is here is to tighten everything down slowly, not quickly. The opposite of quickly. Want that just to kind of hold it. You see that I'm switching it up. See, these are loose again. Uh-huh. Quite it. And there shouldn't be any gap. There, now this is going down easily. You can see, nice and slow. We have to be really careful here, folks. Don't wanna break this thing. Okay, so we're in, all right? All right. Insert these, but I'm inserting them this way because there's too much risk. Dropping it. Yeah. So I just get them started. And then I can run them in the rest of the way. Because if you drop it down there. Yeah. So you kiss it goodbye, buddy. <laughs> and you gotta take the whole damn engine apart. No. Yeah. I keep thinking, well, can I just rotate it upside down? So yeah, but there's all kinds of places where it can get hung up inside. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I put this on. Ah, that's yeah. why you didn't. Exactly. Yeah. Made in Yogi. <laughs> you have one part left. I do, yeah. And this is a hydraulic chain, chain a hydraulic chain tensioner. And uh, I'm putting a new O-ring on it. All right, and a new crush washer. Why do they call it that? Because you tighten the hell out of that until it actually squishes the metal down. It's a very soft metal. Uh -huh. And it fills in any imperfections in the casting on your cylinder head. You hear that? I did. That's hydraulic. Then I can ratchet it. And what this does is this holds all the bits and the chains and rails together. That's it. These are only gonna be hand tight for now. So what I gotta do is like I did on the other ones. No torque. No torque. Ooh, I got my hands in grease. And then I can just do no. Torque. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case anybody gets confused. Let's <laughs> go.
I should have flipped it the other way. <laughs> Why are you using my kitchen gear again? <laughs> It's a perfect size to hold a small amount of oil so that I can hydraulically charge these um, springs. Why are you embarrassing me on my show? I thought that was my job. Oh, that's true. That's where I'm getting all the subscribers from. Anyway. A squirt. Make a very bad day. I just want to get these started. Essentially, when I do this, Yogi Mama, this engine will be in time on the exhaust side. The next thing I'll do after this is to tighten this bolt right there, and that will time the in intake side. I don't know why I assumed you would have to flip the whole thing over again. <laughs> well, when I do the other bank, yes. Okay. I wonder how many times your name has been written on places on this engine, like Yogi <laughs> and Yogi. Just in case I forget who owns this And thing. sees there another one somewhere. <laughs> What's next, Yogi? Torquey torque. Torquey torque? Mm-hmm. I gotta torque the vein cell adjuster with this bolt here. Oh, that one. Yeah, but this one is a two-step. This one here requires um, an initial torque, which I'm gonna do now. And then I gotta do a uh, torque to yield, like we've seen before, using this Space Age tool here. This actually sits right there and then I set it up like that. Aha. Uh -huh. And it has a curvature that matches the bore and um, that will counter hold it while I'm doing the torque. So I'm not putting any stress on the rest of the valve train, right? Nice. This is very important because there's nothing else you can use to counter hold it. I mean, you can't counter hold with this thing back here. It's too weak and you end up snapping the ends of your exhaust cams and or intake cam or, or exhaust. And if you, you use something expensive. else that wasn't uh, like aligned oh, you'd to it, you'd gouge it, it out. Yeah. Right. So, unfortunately, I had to buy these tools. I hate buying specialty tools, but um, 
I got them on eBay. They weren't exactly perfect. This one's fine. This one was a little bit too thick. So I stuck it on my grinder and it fits right in perfectly now. All right. So we're good here. So now I just want to torque that bolt up. Okay. Now that'll hold it. 37. Okay, so we're going to go counterclockwise. 360 degrees. That's clockwise. Oh, that's what I meant. Sorry. Don't scare me. Okay. So that was one full circle. I didn't overshoot it, so I'm ready to go. I got to put in the... Uh, Chain tensioner, and then we'll tighten it up. Seven. Number seven. All right, so now we go back. Think one. Okay. Get in there. Okay. That's in time. And then what I want to do now, that's awesome, first of all. <laughs> I'm super excited. <laughs> My heart is pounding, man. This is like, whew. Now I know what it feels like to be a brain surgeon. I'm just saying. A rocket <laughs> surgeon. All the brain surgeons and aerospace <laughs> engineers watching your channel are like, F, F you, Yogi. <laughs> F you, man. This ain't brain surgery. All right. I'm going to go one more time so I can check timing on bay two. You got to sneak up on this one, too? Yep. You cannot go back. Well, I'm looking at it over here, and it looks pretty good. Okay. Pause it. No, put it in there. <laughs> I'm just so nervous. What if it doesn't and I cry? There. See? Son of a bitch, I'm in. I didn't need to pause. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> breathe, Yogi, breathe. I'm a little bit clipped. Talk amongst yourselves. All right. Man, you know, I tell you what, I, for those of you who live in Texas, especially in the Houston area, maybe even Austin, there is a marathon that happens every year called the MS-150, which is a bike ride between Houston and Austin. It's a two-day trip. It takes about three or four months of training to get ready for that. Um, I feel like this is up there with that as being one of the hardest things I've ever done, mainly because of the stress level of making sure that everything is timed. You take this out when you're supposed to. Don't torque it when there's bolts in there, et cetera, et cetera. This is up there. It was well worth it. And I'm not saying this happened perfectly. I, it, I made a couple of mistakes that I cut out, but trust me, nothing catastrophic, thank goodness. I got it figured out and we're in time. And now I'm like in the MS-150 again where I reached the top of that hill in Austin 
And for those of you guys who rode, who rode guys and gals who rode that path, you know exactly which hill I'm talking about. I'm on the other side. We're heading down. Get the covers on, get the accessories on, and we're gonna have an engine soon. Thanks for watching Yogi's Garage. We'll see you next time. Yo, yo, microphone check, make it a microphone check. Give it a microphone, I make the make it a microphone dead. Don't step to me, newbie, I could truly be moody. I could have played the fucking Grinch in the movie.